Hello and happy Saturday, LinkedIn. I'm so excited to be discussing today the new Intel L515 a LiDAR light imaging detection and ranging adept camera system. I've been waiting for this for many, many months. I believe it came out earlier in the year, February or March. And this is one of the first uh, LiDAR systems I'll be testing. Now, this is Depth Camera Central Volume 21. Many of the other videos I've covered in the past talked about vertical cavity surface emitting lasers, time of flight sensors, and, and various different kinds of uh, photogrammetry, 3D, 3D volumetric model capturing systems. This particular system is, is, is amazing for many different reasons. And let's start with just the power draw first. So this only draws at about three and a half watts of power, which is just phenomenal. And it's about the size of a tennis ball. I'll show you after this because we're gonna do a mashup with the new iPad Pro 12.7 uh, inch uh, LiDAR sensor, which again, it's just a Sony uh, time of flight sensor. We're gonna do that after this and I'll show you the size of this particular Intel L515 system. Um, but this is extraordinary. This can be deployed on all kinds of robotic systems. The, the sensor was designed for indoor only, so it's not global shutter. The infrared uh, from the sun in outdoor and environments can cause crosstalk or interference. Also, always remember that if you have more than one sensor, you're gonna have to either configure them with uh, like a Raspberry Pi, the GPIO boards, and then configure the master and slave configuration so it staggers the projected uh, light imaging detection and ranging per, uh, pattern out so each one doesn't interfere with one another. And they have, uh, and I'll show you, uh, there's actually a screen I'll show you on this side uh, where they have the, the, uh, the coupling system where you can do one, two, three, four, up to 16 different cameras on an Intel NUC um, you know, processor system. Uh, and if you look at the cost of that, it's exponentially lower than many other systems. But this particular sensor is mostly uh, configured and designed to be utilized in indoor environments, again, because of the crosstalk interference from ultraviolet radiation. And the minimum Z is about 0.25 meters. The maximum is about nine meters out on this LiDAR system. And the RGB sensor uh, resolution is around 1920 by uh, 1080. Uh, and the RGB uh, depth uh, field of view, um, horizontal and vertical is about 70 degrees at 43 degrees. And the depth field of view is about 70 to by 55 for the depth camera itself. Um, and for this system, you want to think a lot about robotic systems, the perception engine itself. You know, we, we go back uh, for LiDAR and radar systems and a lot of other perception engine systems that we've been using in autonomous navigation. The LiDAR system is, is going to be that technological paradigm, that inflection point for autonomous, uh, autonomous navigation for many other types of uh, vertical markets around the world. And if you look at Tesla, Tesla decided not to use LiDAR, instead uh, delegating to, uh, relegating to a radar uh, systems uh, using electromagnetic radiation out to 60 gigahertz, 60 to 70 gigahertz for that system, but they're also using eight in, uh, individual um, uh, cameras around the car, but it's basically four pairs of stereoscopic eyes to create 4D uh, you know, labeled data sets via this neural network in real time. And this is just a scaled down version of that. So imagine an autonomous fleet of robotic vehicles that are delivering food from your local, uh, your local food markets. They can all have this kind of sensor, except the next generation sensor would need to have a global shutter so it can operate out, out, out in the open. And an easier methodology and configuration for implementing many different sensors across uh, across a network so they don't have to be hardwired in would be a slave and master it'd be nice if we could design a software solution to this where we could send out signals to other sensors and they could communicate in real time so that we can implement this across a broad spectrum of different products um, and it's really just amazing to see how far they've come along with this they also have a brand new sensor which i'll be discussing uh, in a future video maybe i'll tap this on in the end the intel d455 which is very similar to the z2 uh, visual based odometry system, uh, but they're all, they're adding a laser projection system. So there's an enhancement there for that technology. Um, but for this right here, it can be implemented across every single kind of robotic plat robotic platform you can think about. Raspberry Pi. You think about the Intel NUCs. Um, we think about a lot of the NVIDIA Jetson Nano um, Xavier platforms. You can integrate this and have 360 degree uh, navigation and uh, you know logistical warehouses. Um, and a lot of other places where you have delivery or even in, in healthcare facilities where you need to have very highly accurate information about a patient's um, position. Um, so it, it is aware and, you know, the perception engine is aware of their environment and they can send out all kinds of different signals. But there's also discussions at UW to use sensors like this in COVID-19 to, to uh, you know, 
include social distancing, six foot, 12 foot, eight foot, or 18 foot out, out, out into the future. Uh, you know, there's an infinite number of applications for depth sensing technologies, but for this one specifically in the, in the Intel RealSense SDK series, this is the first LiDAR sensor that they were released and developed, and it is extraordinary. I'll be showing you the, the actual size of the unit, which is just about this big. It has a USB-C input, uh, USB, it only outputs a USB 3.0 on the output to download firmware. So remember that I had some issues trying to install uh, the firmware over the, uh, the SDK, the real sense had a bit of an issue there, but I was able to overcome it. Um, and let's let's just think about broadly the, the, the kinds of sensors that are going to be in, uh, installed all over the world. When I talk about billions of sensors, these are the kinds of sensors I'm talking about, and they scale them down now, and we'll talk about this with the iPad after, where the iPad has uh, an infrared flood emitter on the front on the, uh, the X Series 10 was about 30,000 dots on the, um, the latest fourth generation is around 60,000 dots, but on the back, the LiDAR sensor is actually on the back on this sensor here, and it's not as sparse. I'm gonna throw a video up right here, and you should see that now. The differences between the front projection for facial recognition um, is much different and a lot closely uh, tight, much tighter than the LiDAR projection, and there's a reason for that, right, because the, the pixel resolution that they want for the face has gotta be much closer, the dense mesh has to be much closer, more accurate uh, mathematically than something that's that's looking out and and, and, and projecting uh, light and looking at volumetric 3D spaces so we can generate that. There's a lot of different applications out there already on the iPad store uh, for particular different kinds of systems and I'll be going over this after. And there's a lot of applications for this particular sensor for the Intel L515. Companies are, are essentially just bringing that right over. If you want to do body tracking like skeletal tracking you could just use Cubemos, C-U-B-E-M-O-S. That's I think it's about $70 for a free skeletal tracking um, aware type system that you can implement. They have free code, free samples. There's a lot of stuff on the Intel website as well for distance and measurement and trajectory, all kinds of different you know, methodologies and code examples for you to use and import into your project. Uh, but I just wanted you guys to see what this kind of looks like here, how accurate it is, how fast it is, and try to imagine that this system right here has an accuracy of 23 million pixels per second. And as a solid, a solid state design, that is to me just groundbreaking and revolutionary for a device that's literally this, this big, you know, drawing three and a half watts, is looking out 23 million pixels. You know, many of the other LiDAR systems we have in the market are 300,000, 400,000 uh, points per second. This is 23 million. And if you put four or five or six or eight of these together, where you have one master and seven slaves, not only can you get a very highly accurate 3D map of an environment, um, but you'd also, I mean, you'd have uh, the ultimate perception engine for understanding what's going on inside a building, you know, how many people are picking from certain boxes and pickers and logistical type of circumstances. But even in data centers, I'm working on some applications on three-phase power, on PDUs and generators, where we have this system set up where it's actually able to see the system in real time, and then we can pull the, the, the entire uh, 3D volumetric system in for a data center facility manager so they can actually see the whole lineup right in their hand. It's unbelievable. I can't wait to show some of this stuff to you guys. It's not covered under the NDA. But thank you so much for this initial part for the Intel L515 sensor. Uh, again, and I didn't talk about this, uh, some of the Envis people out there would be very excited just at the end, I want to come back to it, but it is using a laser beam scanning microelectromechanical switchable mirror engine to, uh, to basically send out these LiDAR systems, which is what makes it so efficient. And I've always been very adamant on this point with people in the Envis community that I believe the Envis uh, you know, LBS MEMS technology is, in my opinion, is more applicable in the automotive industry versus spatial computing like the Microsoft HoloLens 2, you know, where it's firing 50, 60,000 times per second with multiple mirrors. We have a lot of artifacts that we've been, we've been seeing, but the technology itself can be implemented across so many different areas. And I definitely believe that automotive uh, LBS MEMS is one of the, 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 the biggest applications out there that we can go after and this technology can kind of seep into. Um, but thank you so much for this. I appreciate it. Let's jump into the iPad so you guys can see what this looks like in real time. I'll just mesh my back cave here and then I'll also show you the, the dimensions of the sensor so you can kind of you can understand what that looks like. Okay, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate it. Let's jump in.